Dan Dan, what are you doing? Welcome back to Kirshner Farmstead. If you are new to our channel, my name is Kirsty, and can you guess what we're going to be making today? <laughs> we are going to be making bone broth, okay? So to get started, you are going to need bones, right? Okay, we are using poultry bones today. Um, actually, specifically all chicken. So we are going to be making a chicken bone broth. Um, what we do is we buy our chicken, like our chicken thighs and other cuts of chicken bone in. So what I do is I debone the thighs before I make like uh, orange chicken or anything like that. And then I just take them and throw them into a bag in my freezer. And when they start to fill up, then I make bone broth. We use a ton of bone broth. So it is absolutely a necessity to save these bones um, because the end product is just amazing. So we are going to be using our roasting pan. And the first thing we are going to do is we are going to take the frozen chicken and put it in there. I also like to save my veggie scraps. I'm gonna have to cut this bag open. I like to save any veggie scraps that I might have that I don't throw to the chickens, I will put in there too. That's why there's some carrot butts and celery. Tanner is jumping like crazy over here. So um, I do like to save as many veggie scraps as I can also, but a lot of them end up just going to the chickens. All right, I think some of those were actually cooked bones also, but that's okay. So you can save cooked bones and you can save um, raw bones for this process. Okay, so do you have celery that looks like this in your fridge? <laughs> because this is the perfect celery to use for any kind of broth. You can put the butts in too, as long as there's no mold or it, as long as it's not rotting or anything like that, you could put the whole, the whole heart of the celery in there. You could use a whole, a whole bunch of celery if you want to. I just like to use whatever's left over in my fridge. I'm going to use yellow onions, um, but you can use whatever onion you want. Check to make sure there's no mold on the outside skins um, because you are going to be putting the skin in there also. There's some spots on this piece. I'm just gonna pull it off. Just in case, because this is going to be canning, so you don't want anything funky in there, right? Now you're gonna cut it into quarters. I think that was probably just dirt on that, but because there's none on this side. So putting the skins in does help with the color, but Really what helps the most with the color is roasting time. Same as the celery and the onions, you have some of the not prettiest carrots. Use those first, okay? And just chop them up, throw them in there. So you guys, it takes a lot of water to fill this roasting pan. I do like to fill it up to the very top, as full as I can get it, so I get the most out of every batch that I'm making. Now we are going to turn it up to about 350 degrees and let that start heating up and it is just going to sit on our counter. Now I wanted to talk to you guys about roasting times. We have made a lot of bone broth over the years and this is what I found. I took these out for an example for you guys. And a lot of the times you will see, oh, you can make bone broth in your Instant Pot in a couple hours. You can, but this is the product that you're gonna get, okay? So it is going to be flavorful, it'll be fine, but it will only be fine as far as I'm concerned, okay? Look at the color of this. That is the product that you get making it in an Instant Pot. This was made in an Instant Pot, okay? So 
it's fine and it will suffice, but look at the color of these two. This is roasting for 36 hours and this is roasting for 48 hours, okay, I believe. I actually have a picture that I took of these three batches so that I could show it in a Facebook post. If you guys are interested, you guys should follow us on Facebook also, it's Kirshner Farmstead. Um, so we really do like the product better when it's roasted for longer. Does it take more time? Of course it does, yes. But the end product is better. So um, I try to do at least 48 hours, um, if not more than that, because the, the richness and the flavor is just so much better than if you just throw some bones in your Instant Pot and get a product in a couple hours, okay? So we will be back tomorrow to show you how it looks. Okay, you guys, our stock has been cooking for four or five days now. <laughs> it's been quite a while. I have added some more water into it, but I just kept it going at a low roast. Um, I just had not gotten, you know, stuff gets busy. I hadn't gotten around to it. It is delicious though. I actually just made a ramen with it this afternoon. So I know that it's really good. I have, uh, we did read, some people say that if you have vegetables in your stock that it, it can get bitter if you cook it for too long, but ours did not. It is delicious, it's still perfect. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to try to, to get out the majority of the solids before we strain it, okay? Oh, I also added in, um, I had one of my jars of zucchini, of freeze-dried zucchini. Uh, it popped open and so it wasn't still nice and crisp. They were kind of um, softer on the softer side. So I took those and threw that whole jar in here too. So we have about two zucchinis worth of zucchini in here. Now there's not a ton of nutrients left in this, uh, in the solids, but I'm still gonna feed it to the chickens because they will still eat it. Okay, we got all of our salt, or we got most of our solids out of our pot. And now you're gonna use a flour sack towel inside of a strainer for this. You don't want your prettiest, nice, new, white flour sack towels for this job. Get ones that are stained because this will stain them. It stains mine every single time. Now, I'm just gonna take a four cup measuring cup. Look at that beautiful dark broth. And I am going to strain it through. Get all of it strained. And then we will be back. Also, I forgot to mention, I do have all of my jars heating up right now so that um, my jars will be hot. We are hot packing today, so my jars will be hot with the hot product, okay? So those are heating up right now, and then we will be back to fill them. Another cool thing about using a flour sack towel is that, do you see all this? That is all of the fat, not all of it, but almost all of the fat in there. So it, it takes a lot of it out without you having to scrape it off the top. Um, there will still be, of course, be a little bit left, but it's not going to be that much. Okay, you guys, so you can see how little fat there is actually left on the top of the broth. If you would like to, you can get that off what, um, with a ladle. I normally don't bother, honestly, though, because it's not enough for me to worry about. Um, but if you do want all of that fat off, you can get it. Before, before I strained it through the flour sack towel, it was a really thick layer all the way across the top of the broth. So it is amazing how those, how the flour sack towel does take it out. Okay, you guys, so I prepped 24 jars. I probably won't need all of them, but I wasn't sure quite how much it was going to make. So I just prepped them all. We are going to be leaving a one inch headspace, so you're gonna fill it to the bottom of your canning funnel or to the base of the neck of your jar. We are going to be going over the full pressure canning instructions today. If you would like those, you can refer back to either one of our, either our uh, pressure canning beans video or our pressure canning corn video for full pressure canning instructions 
and how to look over your pressure canning pot. Okay, you guys, I took and I dipped a nice clean paper towel into my hot water in my canner. I have it heating up already so that the jars getting put into it um, won't get shocked. So it is really important with bone broth to uh, use hot water to wipe off the rims because there is fat that's in it. Like I was saying, there is fat that's in it. So you don't want to have that prevent your lid from sealing. Now remember the new guidelines from all of the jar companies say that you do not need to boil your lids. Just you just wash them in warm soapy water. And as always, fingertip tight, which means that you are going to go until you feel resistance and then a quarter turn farther. If you go farther than that, especially with pressure canning, you're going to end up with buckled lids. And these, a lot of these new companies that have popped up are so prone to buckling anyways that we don't want to give them any more reasons, right? I am using both Kerr and Golden Harvest today. And actually, I have had less, they're actually the same parent company, if, in case you don't know. Kerr, Ball, and Golden Harvest are all owned by the same parent company. And, but that being said, I have had the best luck since everything started with, since everything started being hard to find a couple of years ago. Um, I've had the best luck with Golden Harvest, hands down. I don't think I've ever gotten a messed up lid straight out of the pack from Golden Harvest, but I literally just got this. This is a brand new Kerr lid that just came out of the pack. It has a dent in the top of it, like something hit it going up, and which it doesn't look like it could have, but then it has a bunch of the sealant on the middle of the lid, which is not what you want. And uh, luckily I have backup lids, but if you are buying a brand new case of jars, expecting them to all be good and you don't have any spares at home, keep in mind that that is common now. It is common to have bad lids in packs of Kerr and Ball all the time. So we wound up with 19 jars, which is perfect because my canner fits 20 jars. My canner fits 20 regular mouth jars. Also inspect all of your lids when you are washing. I highly recommend hand washing all of your jars and your lids so that you can get a really good idea that they are not chipped, that the tops of your rings are not chipped, that your um, your lids and rings aren't dented because if a lid is dented, then it will absolutely prevent a seal. I have had it happen multiple times not paying attention, which is absolutely user error. I should have been paying attention, but also the jar lids should be inspected and should be of the highest quality to begin with, don't you think? Okay, you guys, my canner is tall enough to stack the jars. We can put 10 on the bottom and 10 on the top, so I'm gonna put 10 on the bottom and nine on the top. And uh, I'm going to process these at 15 pounds for 20 minutes for my elevation. If you are below a thousand feet, you're going to do 10 pounds, but for the same time. I did have a commenter ask that, and the times with pressure canning do not change. Um, only the weight does. So if you're below a thousand feet of elevation, you're going to use 10 pounds. If you're above, you're going to use 15. Um, we are going to process these pints for 20 minutes. And if you would like to do quarts, it's going to be 25 minutes. All right, we'll be back when these are done, guys. Bye. All right, you guys, our 19 jars of chicken stock just came out of the pressure canner. They all sealed. It's a miracle, but we are so happy and thankful that they did. Um, if we really hope that you guys try this recipe out. If you do, please share it in the comments below how you like it. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. We really do love to interact with you guys. It just makes doing all of these videos worth it. And if you did enjoy this video, I hope that you will like, subscribe to our channel and share with your friends. And as always, have a blessed day. Bye.